So we brought up consciousness a few times. There's several things I wanna kind of disentangle there. So one, you recently wrote a paper titled Consciousness, Religion, and Gurus, Pitfalls of Psychedelic Medicine. So that's one side of it. You've kind of already mentioned that these terms can be a little bit misused or, um, or used in a variety of ways that uh, they can they can be confusing, but in a specific way, as much as we can be specific about these things, about the actual hard problem of consciousness or understanding what is consciousness, this weird thing that it feels like, it feels like something to experience things. Have psychedelics given you some kind of insight on what is consciousness? You've mentioned that it feels like psychedelics allows you to kind of dismantle your sense of self, like step outside of yourself. So that feels like somehow playing with this mechanism of consciousness. And if it is in fact playing with a mechanism of consciousness using just a few chemicals, it feels like we're very much in the neighborhood of being able to maybe understand the actual biological mechanisms of how consciousness can emerge from the brain. So yeah, there's there's a bunch there. I think I, my preface is that I certainly have opinions that are outside that I can say here are my best speculations as a, as a as just a person and an armchair philosopher, and it's that philosophy is certainly not my my training and my expertise. Um, so I have thoughts there, but that that I recognize are completely in the realm of speculation that are like things that I would love to wrap empirical science around, but that are, you know, there's no data and, and getting to the hard problem, like no conceivable way, even though I'm, I'm very open, like I'm hoping that that problem can be cracked. And I do, I, as an armchair philosopher, I do think that is a problem. I don't think it can be dismissed as some people argue it's not even really a, a problem. I, it, it strikes me that that explaining just the existence of phenomenal consciousness is a problem. So anyway, I, I very much ha keep that divide in mind when I talk about these things, what we can really say about what we've learned through science, including by psychedelics versus like what I can speculate on in, in terms of, of, you know, the nature of reality and consciousness. But in terms of by and large, Skeptically, I have to say, psychedelics have not really taught us anything about the nature of consciousness. I'm hopeful that they will. They they have been used around certain, I don't even know if features is the right term, but things that are called consciousness. So consciousness can refer to not only just phenomenal consciousness, which is like, you know, the the, the source of the hard problem and yep. what it is to be like Nagel's um, description, but um the sense of self or so, which can be sort of like the, the experiential self moment to moment, or it can be like the narrative self, the string together of story. So those are things that I think can be, and, and a little bit's been done with, with psychedelics regarding that. But I, I think there's far more potential, like, but so like one story that unfolded is that psychedelics acu acutely have an effects on the default mode network, a certain a pattern of, of activation amongst a subset of brain areas that is associated with self-referential processing it seems mm -hmm. to be more active, more communication between these um, uh, areas, like uh, the posterior cingulate cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex, for example, being parts of this that are, and, and, and others that are um, tied with sort of thinking about yourself, remembering yourself in the past, projecting yourself into the future. And so that it's an interesting story emerged with, when it was found that when psilocybin is on board, you know, in the person's system, that there's a de there's less communication amongst these these areas. So with resting state fMRI imaging, that there's there's less synchronization or presumably communication between these areas. And so I think it was it has been overstated in terms of ah, we see this is like this is the dissolving of the ego. This is it. The story made a whole lot of sense, but there's several. I think that story is really being challenged. Like one, we see increasing number of drugs that are that that decouple that network, including ones like that 
aren't psychedelic. So this may just be a property, frankly, of being like, you know, screwed up, you know, like, mm -hmm. you, you know, being out of your head, being like, like, you know. So anytime you, know, you mess with a perception system, maybe it screws up some, some, uh, just our, our ability to just function in the, the holistically like we do in order, yeah, yeah, for the brain to perceive stuff, to be able to map it to memory, to connect things together, the, the, the whole recur mechanism that, that could just be messed with. with right. Drugs. And it could, and I'm speculating, it could be tied to more if you had to download a new language, everyday language, like not feeling like yourself. Like, right. so whether that be like really drunk or really hopped up on amphetamine or, you know, on like we found it like decoupling of the default mode network on Salvinor A, which is a smokable psychedelic, which is a, a non classic psychedelic, but another one where like DMT, where people are often talking to entities and that type of thing. Yeah. That was a really fun study to run. But nonetheless, most people say it's not a classic psychedelic and, and doesn't have some, some, some of those phenomenal features that people report from classic psychedelics and not sort of the clear sort of ego loss type, not at least not in the way that people report it with classic psychedelics. So you get it with all these different drugs. And so, mm -hmm. and then you also see just broad, broad changes in network activity with other networks. And so I think that story took off a little too soon, although, yes. so I think in, in, in the story that the DMN, the default mode network relating to the self and I know some neuroscientists, it drives them crazy if you say that e it's the ego. And that's yeah. like, e e but self-referential processing, if you go that far, like that was already known before psychedelics. Psychedelics didn't really contribute to that. The idea that this type of, uh, of net brain network activity was related to a sense of self. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> It is absolutely striking that psychedelics that people report with pretty high reliability, these unity experiences that where people subjectively like like they report losing or again, like the boundaries of the however you want to say it, like mm -hmm. like these these unity experiences, I think we can do a lot with that in terms of figuring out the the nature of the, the sense of self.